First Council of Nikki 325 AD Council Fathers 325 AD Introduction This council opened on 19 June in the presence of the Emperor, but it is uncertain who presided over the sessions. In the extant lists of bishops present, Osseus of Cadova and the presbyters Vitus and Vincentius are listed before the other names, but it is more likely that Eustathius of Antioch or Alexander of Alexandria presided. See Decrees of the Ecumenical Councils, ed. Norman P. Tanner S.J., the bold text in the Profession of Faith of the 318 Fathers, constitutes, according to Tanner, the additions made by the Council to an underlying form of the Crete, and that the underlying Crete was most likely derived from the baptismal formula of Caesarea put forward by the bishop of that city Eusebius, or that it developed from an original form which existed in Jerusalem, or at any rate Palestine. A direct descent from the Crete of Eusebius of Caesarea is manifestly out of the question. Vol 1, P2, the figure of 318 given in the heading below, is from Hilary of Poitiers, and is the traditional one. Other numbers are Eusebius 250, Eustathius of Antioch 270, Athanasius about 300, Gelasius of Cyzicus at more than 300. The profession of faith of the 318 fathers we believe in one God the Father all-powerful, maker of all things both seen and unseen and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten begotten from the Father, that is from the substance gr. Alges, lat. Substantia of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten gr. Genethenta, lat. Natum not, made gr. Pathenta, lat. Factum, consubstantial gr. Homoousian, lat. Anias substanti, quod greasy dicant homo usion with the Father, through whom all things came to be, both those in heaven and those in earth, for us humans and for our salvation, he came down and became incarnate, became human, suffered and rose up on the third day, went up into the heavens, is coming to judge the living and the dead, and in the Holy Spirit. And those who say there once was when he was not, and before he was begotten he was not, and that he came to be from things that were not, or from another hypostasis gr. Hypostasios or substance gr. Algers, lat. Substantia, affirming that the Son of God is subject to change or alteration these the Catholic and Apostolic Church anathematizes. 3. Canons. 1. If anyone in sickness has undergone surgery at the hands of physicians or has been castrated by barbarians, let him remain among the clergy. But if anyone in good health has castrated himself, if he is enrolled among the clergy he should be suspended, and in future no such man should be promoted. But, as it is evident that this refers to those who are responsible for the condition and presume to castrate themselves, so too if any have been made eunuchs by barbarians or by their masters, but have been found worthy, the canon admits such men to the clergy. 2. Since, either through necessity or through the importunate demands of certain individuals, there have been many breaches of the church's canon, with the result that men who have recently come from the pagan life to the faith after a short catechumenate, have been admitted at once to the spiritual washing, and at the same time as their baptism have been promoted to the episcopate or the prosperate, it is agreed that it would be well for nothing of the kind to occur in the future. For a catechumen needs time and further probation after baptism, for the apostles' words are clear. Not a recent convert, or he may be puffed up and fall into the condemnation and the snare of the devil. But if with the passage of time some sin of sensuality is discovered with regard to the person and he is convicted by two or three witnesses, such a one will be suspended from the clergy. If anyone contravenes these regulations, he will be liable to forfeit his clerical status for acting in defiance of this great synod. 3. This great synod absolutely forbids a bishop, presbyter, deacon or any of the clergy to keep a woman who has been brought in to live with him, with the exception of course of his mother or sister or aunt, or of any person who is above suspicion. 4. It is by all means desirable that a bishop should be appointed by all the bishops of the province. But if this is difficult because of some pressing necessity or the length of the journey involved, let at least three come together and perform the ordination, but only after the absent bishops have taken part in the vote and given their written consent. But in each province the right of confirming the proceedings belongs to the metropolitan bishop. 5. Concerning those, whether the clergy or the laity, who have been excommunicated, the sentence is to be respected by the bishops of each province, according to the canon, which forbids those expelled by some to be admitted by others. But let an inquiry be held to ascertain whether anyone has been expelled from the community, because of pettiness or quarrelsomeness, or any such ill nature on the part of the bishop. Accordingly, in order that there may be proper opportunity for inquiry into the matter, it is agreed that it would be well for synods to be held each year in each province twice a year, so that these inquiries may be conducted by all the bishops of the province assembled together, and in this way by general consent, those who have offended against their own bishop, may be recognized by all to be reasonably excommunicated, until all the bishops in common may decide to pronounce a more lenient sentence on these persons. The synods shall be held at the following times one before Lent, so that, all pettiness being set aside, the gift offered to God may be unblemished, the second after the season of autumn. 6. 
The ancient customs of Egypt, Libya and Pentapolis shall be maintained, according to which the Bishop of Alexandria has authority over all these places, since a similar custom exists with reference to the Bishop of Rome. Similarly in Antioch and the other provinces the prerogatives of the churches are to be preserved. In general the following principle is evident. If anyone is made bishop without the consent of the Metropolitan, this great synod determines that such a one shall not be a bishop. If however two or three by reason of personal rivalry dissent from the common vote of all, provided it is reasonable and in accordance with the church's canon, the vote of the majority shall prevail. 7. Since there prevails a custom and ancient tradition to the effect that the bishop of Ilia is to be honored, let him be granted everything consequent upon this honor, saving the dignity proper to the Metropolitan. 8. Concerning those who have given themselves the name of Cathars, and who from time to time come over publicly to the Catholic and Apostolic Church, this holy and great synod decrees that they may remain among the clergy after receiving an imposition of hands. But before all this it is fitting that they give a written undertaking that they will accept and follow the decrees of the Catholic Church, namely that they will be in communion with those who have entered into a second marriage, and with those who have lapsed in time of persecution, and for whom a period of penance has been fixed, and an occasion for reconciliation allotted, so as in all things to follow the decrees of the Catholic and Apostolic Church. Accordingly, where all the ordained in villages or cities have been found to be men of this kind alone, those who are so found will remain in the clergy in the same rank, but when some come over in places where there is a bishop or presbyter belonging to the Catholic Church, it is evident that the bishop of the church will hold the bishop's dignity, and that the one given the title and name of bishop among the so-called Cathars will have the rank of presbyter, unless the bishop thinks fit to let him share in the honor of the title. But if this does not meet with his approval, the bishop will provide for him a place as chiropiscopus or presbyter, so as to make his ordinary clerical status evident, and so prevent there being two bishops in the city. 9. If any have been promoted presbyters without examination, and then upon investigation have confessed their sins, and if after their confession men have imposed hands upon such people, being moved to act against the canon, the canon does not admit these people, for the Catholic Church vindicates only what is above reproach. 10. If any have been promoted to ordination through the ignorance of their promoters, or even with their connivance, this fact does not prejudice the church's canon, for once discovered they are to be deposed. 11. Concerning those who have transgressed without necessity or the confiscation of their property or without danger or anything of this nature, as happened under the tyranny of Licinius, this holy synod decrees that, though they do not deserve leniency, nevertheless they should be treated mercifully. Those therefore among the faithful who genuinely repent, shall spend three years among the hearers, for seven years they shall be prostrators, and for two years they shall take part with the people in the prayers, though not in the offering. 12. Those who have been called by grace, have given evidence of first fervor, and have cast off their military belts, and afterwards have run back like dogs to their own vomit, so that some have even paid money, and recovered their military status by bribes, such persons shall spend ten years as prostrators, after a period of three years as hearers. In every case, however, their disposition and the nature of their penitence should be examined. For those who through their fear and tears and perseverance and good works, give evidence of their conversion by deeds, and not by outward show, when they have completed their appointed term as hearers, may properly take part in the prayers, and the bishop is competent to decide even more favorably in their regard. But those who have taken the matter lightly, and have thought that the outward form of entering the church is all that is required for their conversion, must complete their term to the full. 13. Concerning the departing, the ancient canon law is still to be maintained, namely that those who are departing, are not to be deprived of the last most necessary viaticum. But if one whose life has been despaired of has been admitted to communion and has shared in the offering and is found to be numbered again among the living, he should be among those who take part in prayer, only hear a variant reading in less canons de consiles ecumeniques adds until the term fixed by this great ecumenical synod has been completed. But as a general rule, in the case of anyone whatsoever who is departing and seeks to share in the Eucharist, the bishop upon examining the matter, shall give him a share in the offering. 14. Concerning catechumens who have lapsed, this holy and great synod decrees that, after they have spent three years as hearers only, they shall then be allowed to pray with the catechumens. 15. On account of the great disturbance and the factions which are caused, it is decreed that the custom, if it is found to exist in some parts contrary to the canon, shall be totally suppressed, so that neither bishops nor presbyters nor deacons shall transfer from city to city. If after this decision of this holy and great synod, anyone shall attempt such a thing, or shall lend himself to such a proceeding, the arrangement shall be totally annulled, and he shall be restored to the church of which he was ordained bishop or presbyter or deacon. 16. Any presbyters or deacons or in general anyone enrolled in any rank of the clergy who depart from the church recklessly and without the fear of God before their eyes or in ignorance of the church's canon, ought not by any means to be received in another church, but all pressure must be applied to them to induce them to return to their own dioceses, or if they remain it is right that they should be excommunicated. But if anyone dares to steal away one who belongs to another, and to ordain him in his church without the consent of the other's own bishop, among whose clergy he was enrolled before he departed, the ordination is to be null. 17. 
since many enrolled among the clergy have been induced by greed and avarice to forget the sacred text, who does not put out his money at interest, and to charge 1% a month on loans, this holy and great synod judges, that if any are found after this decision to receive interest by contract, or to transact the business in any other way, or to charge a flat rate of 50%, or in general, to devise any other contrivance, for the sake of dishonorable gain, they shall be deposed from the clergy, and their names struck from the roll. 18. It has come to the attention. These are the chief and most important decrees as far as concerns Egypt and the Most Holy Church of the Alexandrians. Whatever other canons and decrees were enacted in the presence of our Lord and Most Honored Fellow Minister and Brother Alexander, he will himself report them to you in greater detail when he comes, for he was himself a leader as well as a participant in the events. The following is not found in the Latin text, but is found in the Greek text. We also send you the good news of the settlement concerning the Holy Pash, namely that in answer to your prayers this question also has been resolved. All the brethren in the East who have hitherto followed the Jewish practice will henceforth observe the custom of the Romans and of yourselves, and of all of us who from ancient times have kept Easter together with you. Rejoicing then in these successes and in the common peace and harmony and in the cutting off of all heresy, welcome our fellow minister, your Bishop Alexander, with all the greater honor and love. He has made us happy by his presence, and despite his advanced age has undertaken such